What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I just wanna say happy 2019. Thank you for all of you who have subscribed. I've literally had over like 150 subscribers in the last week. Hopefully that means that you all have gotten your new bullet journal and you're just looking for videos on YouTube, looking for ideas. Another shout out to Matt Ragland uh, who followed me on Twitter and commented on my last video. Thanks man, I appreciate it. And I really wanna thank you for the um, 10 block weekly planner that um, you came up with. That's helped me so much in my business. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. Today, I'm going to be setting up my new 2019 bullet journal here. Um, basically, I started bullet journaling in September of last year, but I knew I wouldn't have enough space in um, this bullet journal to do all of this year. So I started, I decided to start fresh and not much is going to change with the new um, journal this year. Ooh, I always love cracking open a new moleskin, which by the way, if you're interested, check the link in the bio. I think I got a pretty good deal on Amazon for this dotted moleskin. Um, it's just really simple. There's, there's literally just page after page of dotted. Um, so the structure for bullet journaling is really non-existent. It's kind of what you make of it, which is why I like just using the moleskin. Um, again, for those of you all who don't know, or maybe you do, I set up my bullet journal in sort of the, um, the original way. So if you check in the description, I'll put the link to bulletjournal.com or whatever it's called down there. So you can check that out as well. But I'm just going to get right into it. Um, if you want to set up your bullet journal with me, go right ahead. Basically, um, I realized in the last video that this camera, um, it was kind of hard to see what I was doing. So I am shooting this one in 4K today so that I can zoom in and show you guys a more detailed view of what I'm doing here. But I digress. Let's use last year's journal to get some ideas. Again, I'm using the Stedler pens here, which I'll link to in the description as well if you're interested in getting these. I use a black Stedler pen for our marker, whatever you want to call these, for um, basically everything I do here. And then I actually use the colored markers for different things like finished tasks, things like that. But as always, I usually write um, in case of loss, please return to, if you'll see here, I do my name, my phone number, and then as a reward, I always offer hugs and friendship because I think that's really nice and I don't have a ton of money. So in the usual fashion, the first page in this moleskin is kind of connected to that um, return page so I just kind of skip that one and I start my new moleskin fresh and clean in uh, again the style of Matt Ragland I just go ahead and say that I count how many boxes there are up and down so this specific moleskin bullet journal is 24 boxes across and 40 down um, I usually just write a little intro here so Boo Joe, um, 2019. That's kind of gross looking, but um, it's gonna get the job done. So uh, next I go right into index. And in my last year's bullet journal, I had just two pages, which I didn't even end up using very many at all, um, if you can see that. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. Two pages should get the job done. There we go. Um, and then of course I come down one line and boop. And the future log is the first thing that I'm going to do. So future log. So if we skip on over, future log is where I actually start to number my pages, which I always number and I put back in the index so it's easy to find things. So we're gonna start with page one and page two. There we go. And what I use for my lines is this like uh, architect or interior designer triangle. Um, basically just anything that has a straight edge is good. So um, this is a little big. If I, if I had the perfect uh, line tool, it would be about six inches so that I could stick it in the back of the uh, dotted journal where there's this little like um, folder area, which is nice. So basically I set up the top here with future log 
Again, I don't use bullet journal for beauty or making it look really nice. I do it more for um, just saving time, being productive, being efficient. So I don't really worry too much about how it looks. It's, it's fun to kind of take your time and make it look really nice. But as far as the future log, the index goes, I'm just kind of writing, you know, I could center it perfectly and things like that. But for uh, purposes of this video and for what I use my bullet journal for, I just go pretty quickly because again, I'm trying to save time and be productive here. So basically, if you're following along with me right now and sort of setting yours up, I split this page into thirds, as you can see from my old journal here. Um, so basically, I came 13 blocks down to make these first lines here, and I'm just gonna go all the way across. Again, I come down 13 blocks from that line and make another line. So that's how I section that off. Um, we're gonna do January, February, March, April, May, June. And do the second page the same. Setting up the page number. All right, so I've got my future log set up here and basically what I use the future log for, I didn't use it much uh, in my last journal, but if I can kind of show you here, um, I kind of do like birthdays of people who are close to me, any sort of holidays coming up. If you know you have like a vacation, maybe in July or something, putting that down. Uh, and that's really it. Also like, I don't know, if you, if you have like dentist appointments, things that you know are gonna come up in the year, I try to sit down and do those like now. I'm not gonna do that today just to save time uh, for this video, but basically that's the idea of the future log, at least for me. And I kind of just leave it spacious and not put too much content on there because as you'll find, we have sort of our year set out and then we're gonna go in and do month to month and week to week. So everything kind of breaks down smaller and smaller as you go and um, month to month type thing. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the index and say the future log is pages. I usually do a little, um, so it's pages one through four. So I come here, I write one through four like that and then I actually just jump right into uh, the month so that's what I'm gonna do here uh, if you remember in my last video I also set up habit trackers which October looks really really nice I was trying really hard as you can tell um, this is subject to change depending on what I'm trying to do maybe what my New Year's resolution will be I like trying to read the Bible each day read a business book or something that will help in my career each day um, you know, alcohol consumption, Instagram posts. I don't know if I'll add that this year. I like to meditate each day. I like to hydrate each day. I have this Hydrate Spark water bottle, which actually it has um, a set amount of water that I'm supposed to drink according to my body weight. And if I fall behind that water per day, I know this has nothing to do with bullet journaling, but it's nice and I love it. I'm gonna tell you guys, cause I love you. Um, it blinks to let me know that I need to drink water. So it's cool to be able to, at the end of the day, see did I meet my water goal or not, and know for sure. So I mark that down. Wake by six, no spend. Um, trying to save money, you know. Uh, if I put up a YouTube video, I mark that down as well. As you can see in October, I did really well with that also. Um, boo, 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 boo. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the month that way. I had movies to watch and shows to watch in my old journal as well as my minimalist check sheet, which I'll probably transfer that minimalism check sheet over to this year's bullet journal just because I don't wanna have to go back to last year's journal at all if I can help it. Um, and then I have my scripture page as well, which I'm definitely gonna be doing um, in the new journal as well. So let's go ahead and set up October. I'm pretty sure I do this the exact way the bullet, actual official bullet journal people do as well. I do the day of the month and then I have the day of the week. So it's like one is the Monday, two is Tuesday. And then as I go along, I do an X or a line next to. So I leave a space for that. Um, I leave a space here just in case some events are really important. And basically all I do on the month page is put the events that are gonna be happening. Now this is getting more and more specific as I said before, so it's not the future log. So I'm still gonna be putting like birthdays and things like that here, but I'm also gonna be saying like, I have a meeting on Tuesday, or I need to travel somewhere for the weekend, or um, reminders, things like that. Mostly just 
important dates because as I get into my weekly structure, that is when I get real specific on to-do lists and things like that. So set it, I'm gonna set that up real quick and um, if you wanna do it along with me, we're gonna go ahead and let me just make sure that I'm doing everything right here. I think I am. So at the top, we're gonna go ahead and write January. I need to try to keep this straight, don't I? January, and then I'm gonna drop down. I'm gonna skip the first box, but I'm gonna write one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna go down until I have all the days of January. I actually need to look up how many days there are in January because I'm an idiot. 31 days in January. All right, so I got that set up, and now I'm actually gonna go in and say, okay, January 1st was a Tuesday. So again, right next to the numbers, I'm gonna write what day of the week they are. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and repeat. So one thing you can always do when you get down to the bottom to make sure you did it right was would be to check. I have my Mac pulled up right here, if you can see, and I have the calendar up. And Tuesday, or no, the 31st of January is in fact a Thursday, so I've done it right, so that's good to know. So now what I do is I skip another box so that if I have any urgent things that come up, I like to leave space to be able to do like an exclamation point or a big star. Um, so I leave space for stuff like that. Um, I don't really have, I, I don't really wanna spend a lot of time putting down specifically what I have going on. I'll probably do an update video or something like that. Who knows? Um, so you can kind of see what it looks like. But basically, I'll just show you on my last year what I started doing near the end of the year for um, for dates is actually doing a box instead of a circle. Um, the, the bullet journal official does a circle for a date or a meeting or whatever. Uh, I was doing boxes, so if you can kind of just see, I would do little boxes and then as they happened, I would just kind of check them off, fill them in. Um, as you can see in November, I forgot to check off the last few days, but that's basically how it's gonna look. And again, I left space here in case there was a really, really important date I needed to remember. Putting a big red exclamation point or something like that is good. Now, the official bullet journal also asks for, oh, not asks for, but recommends we do a tasks page, which I didn't make much use of last year, but I still put it there because there's, Sometimes I have like important tasks that I know I need to do in November, things like that, so that's good. So again, I gotta number these. So this is page five, page six, and then as we move on to page seven, page eight. So what I do after I do the tasks page each month is I set up my habit tracker. Now habit trackers are big for me because there are a lot of things that I, think are kind of important for me to do day to day and in order to have um, a healthy life. So working out, again, meditating, I've gone through all this already. Um, but basically the way I set this up is I'll just kind of show you last year's, again, near the end when I was getting near the holidays, I was out of it and I wasn't keeping up with my bullet journal as much as I should. So I have all these blank spaces and obviously I wasn't doing too hot with a lot of my um, habits here. So I just kind of set it up this way, big bold November header with the habit tracker there. Uh, and then again, I do the whole, you know, one through however many days there are in the month and then the days of the week underneath that do a line in between, and then just list out, you know, what I've got here. So again, wake by six, hydrate, meditate, read Bible, read book, workout, no spend, no alcohol, asleep by 9.30, Instagram, YouTube video. I don't know if I'm gonna have Instagram and YouTube videos for um, my habits this year. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up um, my habit page here, which you can do along with me if you would like to. So counting over from the inside, I go seven blocks. Make a little dot there, and that's where my line is gonna run down the page. It is in fact 2019, and it's January. Now that I've written January there, boop. I go ahead and write habit tracker here, which again, you don't have to do any of this stuff the same. This is just how I like doing it. 
All right, so I've got that set up, boom, like so. And now we're gonna go ahead and do our dates. So I usually start back here um, just to make it a little easier and put the 31st and then count down just so I know how much space I have over here and you know how everything's set up, so. All right, and then again underneath that, I write out the days of the week. And then I write down what I'm trying to do my habits on for that month, which I still need to figure out, so I'm gonna work through those. I usually leave the next page blank for any sort of new things that I might have this month. Like say I wanted, I could add my minimalist um, checklist here or something like that. Or if I had some ideas, things like that, just some quick notes, which as we go into the weekly setup here, I also leave a page for notes for any weekly notes that I have. So. Flipping the page over to page nine and 10, I do my weekly set up. Now, I kind of went over this a lot in the last video, so for those who want to go ahead and set up with me, I'll actually just kind of walk through how I did it um, in the last year. I'm gonna set it up the exact same way, so I'm not trying to like cheat you guys by not setting it up this way. I just, it, it takes a lot of time and you have uh, not as much time as you would like in the week, just like me. So I'm just gonna walk through how I do it instead of actually setting it up with you. Um, as you can see, uh, it's gonna be the exact same. So again, I like using the colored markers. I'm gonna zoom in on this too so you can see it a little better. I like using the colored markers just because this looks really cool um, and having sort of your different uh, projects or however your different time consuming hours throughout the week in sort of different colored sections really kind of helps helps me out again thanks to Matt Raglan for this idea for um, the way this is done this just helps me know what I'm spending my time on throughout the week and if I feel like man I went through that whole week and I didn't have a lot of time it's probably because I was spending time doing things I shouldn't have, but I record everything here so I can know where my time went. So obviously, you know, I spent three hours on meetings. So, you know, that's, that's fine, that's good. Um, now again, if I get to four hours of meetings in a week, maybe I need to tell my clients, okay, let's, let's meet next week because I've already kind of spent a lot of times on meetings this week and I need to focus on doing some more work for Harvest or something like that. So again, for if, if you don't know and you're unfamiliar uh, with how I've set this up, basically, again, I use Matt Raglan's approach here and the way this works is it's a work week 10 block um, section. So basically how that works is each one of these little blocks, or right now I just have them as rows. You can add lines to the top and bottom here. Let me see if I can find one of my earlier ones. So as you can see, I did like actual blocks, but each block stands for four hours. So I have it set up here, 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. 100% obviously is four hours. And I have 10 of them. So there's 40 hours in the work week. That's how I've set up my time as well. So as I go along, so Shoot the Shot is a podcast that I'm a part of. So as you can see on this Monday, I spent a little over two hours there. So I mark it down so I can kind of see like, I spent two hours there on Monday. So what else did I do on Monday? You know, things like that. And at the end of the week, you can see there's a lot of blank space here, which either means I was doing productive stuff and I just forgot to write it down, or it means I was fiddling around, which might be the case. And it tells me next week, hey, let's try to fill up this whole thing, or maybe an easier goal. Let's try to have only one block that's not filled up. So things like that. And as you can see, um, so that's how that works. And I color code just because I think it looks cool. Uh, if you're trying to do something similar to this, feel free to copy my color codes here. Your week's gonna look differently from mine, obviously. This is super important for me, having my own business, obviously seeing where my time goes. It's super, super great, super helpful. This is the most, this is the thing I use the most besides my tasks here, which we'll move on to now. As you can see, I do three days each page. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you're trying to follow along and sort of set up yours the same way, I'll move my hands out of the way so you can see. Wednesday pops up next to the fourth uh, to last block here. Tuesday is right above the third block and Monday's at the very top. 
Um, I do this a little differently from the official bullet journal. I do squares instead of circles for my events and my meetings. And as I complete them, I do a little green fill in there instead of a, I don't really know what they do. <laughs> um, if I complete a task, I make an X, and if I need to migrate it to the next day, I make a blue arrow, which is nice. Um, and then flipping on to the next page here, also, if I ever have like a note or something that needs to go here in my to-do section, I'll do a little dash and add the note there. Um, so I have Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday are split between these two columns. As you can see, I do actually do two columns for my events. I think it looks really nice. It keeps everything nice and secure. And basically, if I have tasks that go beyond this second column, then I have too much in a day anyway, and I'm not gonna get to it. That's what I've come to find in my few months doing this. I never have so many tasks that it fills up both rows. So if you're worried about running out of space, I wouldn't because I don't get to everything usually. Um, like for instance here, I still have three rows here to add tasks and I still didn't get this one done. So I moved it to the next day, I migrated it. The last page I do is a notes page. Basically if I have any thoughts, any notes um, that I think could fit on this page or doesn't need to go on digital like Evernote or shared between a client and myself, I'll just jot it down here. If I'm doing any math stuff, trying to add up some numbers, dollars, things like that, or whatever it might be. And it's good to look back and be like, when did I have that thought about starting a new YouTube series? Oh, it was, you know, uh, between the, it was this week <laughs> or whatever. So anyway, that's about it. Um, as you can see the next page, I just start that 10 blocks again and there's around four weeks in a month. So oh, a month usually takes about four pages and then I go back and do the month again. Um, and again, I always go back in and I fill in my index here so I can find things easily. But that's gonna do it for this video. I thank you so very much for watching and I know this video was kind of similar to my last bullet journal video but you guys have liked that so much, you've commented on it so much that I thought I would go a little bit more in depth as I was setting up my 2019 journal here which I'm super excited to get started and uh, start adding stuff to but I appreciate you guys watching this video. As always, leave any likes, comments, suggestions. Um, I, I love hearing from you guys. This channel has been an absolute blast and is doing way better than I ever thought. I have a music channel. Um, again, I've said this before, but my music channel is more of just good video, bad video. You sound like the person you're covering or I hate that song. And it's less of asking questions and having discussions. So I've loved doing that with you guys. Um, 2019 is gonna be a big year. The wife and I just bought a house, so I'm gonna be taking you guys along through that journey as well um, as we're um, doing some renovations, as we're moving in, um, and you know, just telling my life story. Uh, that's what this channel is for. And if you wanna see more bullet journal videos, let me know some ideas because that is my bullet journal setup. It's very simple, very minimal, and I don't really feel like changing it too much just because it works for me and it keeps me productive and efficient. But any ideas for other videos? I love technology. Love Harry Potter, by the way. I'm super into Harry Potter. So by the way, if you've made it this far in this video, which if you have, I love you and you're my best friend, I want you to comment below in the, in the comment section. Uh, comment Niffler, which if you don't know is a Harry Potter creature. Uh, I love Harry Potter. So comment that down below and I'll know that you made it this far. If you have made it this far, I love you. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment any suggestions, opinions. I know I've said it a thousand times, but I really do enjoy that from you guys. And uh, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks so much for watching and a happy new year to you and yours. Peace.